So in terms of expanding the transformation, I think we're going to hear next from Sean Covell. Sean is a Vice President for Government Affairs at Qualcomm, and she's going to talk with us about how wireless can harness the power of mobile technology to transform lives. So welcome, Sean. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. So yeah, my team was like, don't worry, you're going after the CTO, that's gonna be boring. <laughs> yeah, she was phenomenal. I want her to come to Qualcomm. So um, I'm gonna turn things a little more serious now. So every day, 800 women die from unnecessary complications due to pregnancy and childbirth. Millions of children in emerging regions don't have access to formal education. And over one billion people live in unacceptable conditions related to poverty. But there's one tool that can and is helping to address all of these challenges, and that's mobile technology. I've had the pleasure in my role at Qualcomm to see every day the positive transformation mobile technology has on people's lives. And it's our vision at Qualcomm that mobile will help billions of people increase their opportunity. So what do we do at Qualcomm? We at Qualcomm make the chipsets and the software that go in your mobile devices. Basically the brains of the device that allow you to make a phone call, surf the web, access all your apps, upload a photo, find your location, and more. But I really think it's the power of that technology to connect a pregnant woman in Morocco to an ultrasound, or a child in India to educational materials, or a woman living in poverty in Indonesia to economic opportunity. That's where the magic of mobile truly happens. So it's based on this belief, you know, our passion for wireless technology, our belief in its transformational power for social good, that Qualcomm created a strategic initiative called Wireless Reach. And I run that program, so I think I've got the best job in the world. <laughs> we were formalized in 2006, and we invest in programs that leverage mobile broadband in the areas of education, healthcare, entrepreneurship, public safety, and the environment. To date, we have over 100 projects in various stages of development in 40 countries, and we've benefited 6.7 million people. So, you know, many people have strategic CSR programs, and, and they all do a couple of things. Right? We know that they promote a company's products and services and that they tend to align with business development goals. But after that point, what makes a strong CSR program? What I want to do today is share with you Qualcomm's blueprint for what we think has made wireless reach successful. So number one, we try to ensure that our programs address national public policy goals. You know, governments are struggling with um, the burden of trying to provide health care and education to their populations. So really, if you're going to go into a country and help, you really should be aligning yourself with government objectives. Number two, we convene experts. We know that we're wireless experts, but we don't pretend to um, know about Chinese education policy or microfinance in Africa. So we try to align ourselves with folks who either have content expertise or local issue expertise. And that way we can put together programs where we're leveraging everyone's core strengths. Finally, business sustainability. Now, and I'll admit to you, this is the hardest part, right? So we try to fund programs that have a business plan in place to be sustainable. But that requires patience, and it requires perseverance. Um, sometimes our projects can be sustainable after a year. 
Sometimes that takes five years. And you have to be willing to put in the time when things aren't going according to plan. So now that I've sort of given you that blueprint, what I want to do is give you some real live examples of our programs that illustrate those points. So the first project I'll talk to you about is the Mobile Ultrasound Patrol Project in Morocco. This is a great example of supporting a nation's public policy objectives. So Morocco is one of nine countries that has adopted a national plan to improve child and maternal health. And you may not know that um, the majority of maternal deaths are caused by placental complications. And the only way you can detect those is by an ultrasound. So what we did to address the government's objectives is we partnered with a company called Trice Imaging. And we brought mobile ultrasound equipment into rural health houses, trained the clinicians to take the ultrasounds, and then transmit those images over the 3G network to doctors who could then consult. And we had some phenomenal results. So, you know, we, we took the time that it took to get those images to doctors from four days down to two seconds. The beauty of 3G, right? The cost was reduced 98% to $2. Time for diagnosis down to less than 24 hours. And, you know, sometimes that's critical, right? And then, of course, just the ability for the practitioners to, to accurately capture the images, the quality went up. So some great results that resulted in the Ministry of Health in Morocco agreeing to roll this program out, and they're rolling it out, we're not involved anymore, in 10 additional health houses, and they're looking at how to scale it nationally. So a great example of if you make sure that you're aligning yourself with the goal of the government, that will help your program. The next project I'll talk to you about is Plan Learn in India. And this is a great example of convening experts. So this is a project where we work to provide games on 3G mobile devices to children ages five to eight. And it's all about teaching them literacy and numeracy skills. But again, we're the wireless experts, not the education experts for India. So we partnered with Sesame Workshop India, and it's through, you know, we all know Sesame, they're early education experts, and their folks in India were, were able to help us design locally relevant content for these games. And again, some great results. So we had nearly 6,000 6, children in 57 schools use these games. The apps were downloaded 42,000 times, and we did some third-party research that showed significant improvements in their literacy and numeracy skills. So again, the power of utilizing experts where you don't have expertise. And finally, I'll talk to you about App Lab. I like to call this my most successful failure. <laughs> and um, if only I had 10 more minutes, I'd tell you all the, the secrets. But, um, so this is a great example of sustainability and, what, and the beauty of perseverance. So we started this project with the Grameen Foundation and it was based on the simple, you know, everybody's heard of the village phone program. You know, women in the village taking out microfinance loans to then retail the minutes on their phone to the villagers. We spent a lot of time researching exactly where to roll this out, did it six months in, complete failure the mobile penetration had increased far faster than we had anticipated. So none of these poor entrepreneurs were, were making money. So we needed to go back to the drawing board and what we did is we innovated social applications that they could then take back and sell. So you know whether it was topping up other people's mobile phone minutes through electronic vouchers or um, signing them up for a day job search so they could know where the local work was. Well, after we did that, we hit the formula to make this a success. But it took a few years. But when we exited the project in 2012, we had 15,000 of these micro-entrepreneurs who were reaching 1.5 million unique customers. 82% of them are women. 100% of them are profitable. And importantly, 
they were able to lift themselves out of poverty. So just really some significant results. And uh, RUMA, a social enterprise, was incubated out of this. So this project is now completely sustainable on its own. I first learned about selling airtime packages for mobile phones from Ibu Marni at the Grameen Foundation. And when she offered to help me start my own business, I said okay. I have an ultrasound device that fits into a small backpack that I can take to expecting mothers in these underserved communities. Before I had never used a computer, but this was my first time using a tablet. I've really improved in my educational progress. It's also important to remember that these things are probably the only computer that a lot of the world will ever have for the first time. Then when we sell into these new markets, we improve the economies. It's both a social good and it's good for business. There still is this gender gap between men and women with access to mobile phones. What we've done, thanks to Qualcomm, is be able to give each of the women a tablet computer. So this is a, an amazing uh, tool, but it's also, of course, a way of them being able to access the internet. to give you a sense of how Qualcomm has worked to structure wireless reach um, into a successful CSR program. And uh, my team will probably kill me for this, but I want to end by inviting each of you, if you would like to collaborate with us, you know, we partner with private sector companies, nonprofits, NGOs, universities to do these programs. If you want to collaborate with us to leverage the power of mobile for social good, we'd love to work with you. Thank you. <laughs>